Hello, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. In this video, we're going to learn about synthesis and retrosynthesis. Now, this is a very important topic, and it's something that you're going to do throughout the entire year. So, synthesis is the foundation of organic chemistry. Everything that we learn is about somehow related to the, the, the idea of synthesis, okay? So, we're going to learn all about it today, and basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start with these topics here. Now, this video series is going to be a little bit different than the other ones where I'm not going to have a video for each section because it really isn't that many, uh, that much time per section until we get to the end, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to build a story together. We're going to start with the foundation. We're going to understand the basics of what a reaction is, and we're going to bring our way up to the point where we can do retrosynthesis. So synthesis and retrosynthesis. Okay? So let's get started, and you'll see the, the path that we're taking is actually a very intuitive path. It's going to help you to learn this really well. All right, so the first thing we're, we're doing here is we're talking about uh, what a reaction is, right? Like, so let's start there. A reaction is a combination of bond breaking and bond making that occurs in order to make a new product or a new molecule, okay? That's all we're doing. It's a chemical change in a structure or in, in a system by breaking and forming bonds. That's it. That's a reaction. Now, reactions can be classified into different types. Now, this is really useful because you see over here, these reactions right here, A, B, C, and D, this covers almost all of organic chemistry. So after I describe what these are right here, you could turn to any page in your textbook and it's going to be one of these five reactions. That's it, uh, four reactions. It'll be one of these four reactions here. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. The first one's known as an addition. And what an addition means is that you're taking two molecules that are n independent of each other and you're making them into one. Okay, that's known as an addition reaction. I'm going to give you an example of that. Let's say I have a carbonyl group and you, by the way, you don't have to know these examples. You just have to get the idea of what's happening. So if I have a carbonyl and I add water into this environment, then it turns out that what you wind up getting is this structure here. So what actually happens here is these two pieces, A and B, are coming together to make C. So that's the process that's taking place here, okay? And so notice how all we did is add two things together. That's known as an addition reaction. And again, there are many addition reactions, and we're going to learn a lot throughout the whole year, but this is the general template. Now, an elimination would be the opposite of addition. So I'm not going to use this example, but if I have, let's say, um, let's do a BR right here, alkyl bromide, and I add a base, let's say CH3O minus, and they react together. So what we actually do here is we're going to take this right here known as C, and the CH3O minus is actually not, uh, it's, it's the solution, right? Because this is methanol in methoxide is what we say. Now, these right here are going to work on this molecule C to make something new. We're going to eliminate things from C. So watch, if I was to take the H from this right here, this neighbor H, and pull it off by using a base, this is an acid-base reaction, which is the carbon is protonating this CH3O minus. Well, then this can go here and make a double bond and the BR can leave. So we've just eliminated from this molecule C an H and a BR. So we have that plus CH3OH plus BR minus. So this is known as an elimination. From the point of view of C, from this right here, C, we've made two different things, actually three. We've made this piece here by eliminating from that starting material a BR and an H. And that's it. So that's an example of an elimination. All right, the next one is known as a substitution. And this is where we're swapping pieces. So for example, if we have, let's say, a structure that has, let's say, um, a BR right there, okay? And then I have, let's say, I'll put let me think, what do I want to put here? I guess I'll put 
H2O. Okay. Now, actually, I'm going to show the H2O out so you can see this clearly. So let's say it looks like this, okay? Now, if, let's say, this oxygen goes into the carbon with Br, and the Br leaves and takes the H from that oxygen, okay? So notice how it's not just leaving, but we're taking the H off of water. Then we make this right here, HBr, and we make water attach or the OH from water attaching onto the carbon. Now again, don't worry about the mechanism. I just want to introduce you to the types of reactions that exist in the, the categories. Now this is known as a substitution because what we did is we swapped out pieces. So for example, if let's say this is A and this is B for the first molecule, and let's say this is C, oxygen, and this is D, then now we have a connection between A and C, and we have a connection between D and B. See how we swap pieces? That's what it's meant to be a substitution. You're substituting pieces of each molecule with each other. That's it. Okay, the final type is known as rearrangement. Now, a rearrangement is also known as its constitutional isomer. All we're going to do is change something within the molecule, but it's the same molecule, so A just becomes B, meaning we're not working on it with anybody else. We're just going to modify A and make it into something different, B. But it's the same uh, number of atoms, the same formula. That's a constitutional isomer. So I'll give you an example. Let's say for, uh, we have um, a system like this where there's a double bond on the end. And somehow at the end, we make a system where the double bond's in the middle somewhere. Well, this is a rearrangement. We rearranged the double bond's location within the system and that's known as a rearrangement, okay? So rearrangements is the last category. So as I mentioned before, these, you just want to get a general idea of the type of reactions that exist, and these are them. There's only four. Your entire textbook is made up of these four. That's it. So if you turn to any page, you will see one of these four over and over again. Now, it might be harder to identify over others, but this is it. Okay, so it makes organic a lot easier to, to, to organize when you think about it from this broad point of view, that there's only really four things that are happening, four reactions, classifications. Okay, now let's continue. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what's known as a reaction mechanism. What is a reaction mechanism? Now, a reaction, we already know, is breaking and forming of bonds. But if I want to describe this, the process that's happening, the actual events that are taking place, that's called a reaction mechanism. So a reaction mechanism is a detailed description of what happens to that molecule when it goes from the beginning to its very final endpoint. Okay? Now here's an example of that. Right now, if I have an alkene and somehow it gets a Cl added to it, and also, by the way, an H, which we don't really see, but I'll put it right there. Well, this would be what happened, right? That would say that this reactant, right here's a reactant, and it becomes this product, right? But the stuff in between is describing what's happening. So in order for this alkene to become an alkyl chloride at the end, this is what's taking place in between. And so we have what we call in the middle intermediates. So this is an intermediate. It's something that's going to take place during its path or uh, through its path to product. So you might have one intermediate. You could have five intermediates. So all the things that happen between reactant and product is called intermediate. And now in this case, all we're doing is we're breaking this double bond. We're making a carbocation. This is called a carbocation because the carbon is positive. We'll learn more about that after this exam. Uh, so we have a carbocation here, and then Cl is coming into it. Now, there are certain things that we could do to describe this reaction, and that's what these tools are below. The first thing is we could show electron flow, right? And we already know that this is telling us where electrons are going, not where the nucleus is or the atom, the symbol. It's where the electrons go. So I could say that this double bond is going after H. It's an acid-base reaction. This is a base. Remember, alkenes are...